Hello everyone, I'm Gina from Rear Valley High School, Singapore. Do you know why I'm here today? Yes, you're right. I'm going to talk about Exclusive Volcanism. Exclusive Volcanism refers to the movement of magma. It's cooling above the Earth's surface in the extrusive rock formation created. There are three main types of materials extruded during a volcanic eruption. Lava flows, pyroclastic materials, and gases. Do you know what is the difference between magma and lava? Magma is most of rock material below the Earth's surface, while lava is magma at the Earth's surface. There are many different types of magma, and they can be classified in various ways. One of which is to classify magma according to their silica content. There are two common ways of classifying magma based on their silica content. First, magma can be classified as a sulfate magma, which has a low silica content of 50%, and acidic magma, which has a silica content of 60%, and rhyolitic magma, which has a high silica content of 70%. Next, magma can also be classified as mastic magma, intermediate magma, and dalsic magma. As mastic magma has a low silica content, it crystallizes to form silica poor rocks, such as basalt and gable. Dalsic magma has a high silica content, thus it crystallizes to form silica rich rocks, such as granite and rhyolite. In movies, lava flows are often portrayed as fiery streams of incandescent rock material posing great danger to humans. But actually, lava flows do not move particularly fast. Thus, people likely to be affected can be evacuated. There are three main types of lava flows. When basaltic lava congeals, they commonly form pahoho flows, ara flows, and pillow lavas. Both pahoho and ara lavas originate from the extrusion of basaltic magma, but ara formation is the result of a much viscous lava flow. At the initial stage of eruption, the very fluid lava forms thin pahoho flows. Pahoho flows usually have relatively smooth skin because of its still molten subsurface layer that continues to advance even when the top has congealed. Thus, pahoho flows usually have ropey twisted structures. As the lava cools with time and distance and loses dissolved gases, it forms clinkery R flows. The R flow now moves very slowly. R flows have a surface of rough jagged blocks with dangerously sharp edges and spiny projections because as the surface of the flow cools and forms a crust, the interior may mo remain molten and continue to advance. Pillow lavas may also be found when the basaltic magma is extruded underwater, such as along the mid-ocean ridges. Pillow structure is found when the surface of the basaltic lava is chilled quickly. The brittle cooled surface then cracks and allows the steel molten magma to ooze out like a strip of toothpaste. In turn, the newly ooze strip cools its surface cracks and the process continues. The end result is a pile of lava pillows that resemble a jumbled pile of sandbags. Most of the lavas on the oceanic crust are in fact pillow lavas. The gases in highly viscous magma are less able to escape and they build up an internal pressure capable of producing a violent eruption. Upon release, these superheated gases expand a thousandfold as they blow pulverized rocks and lavas from a vent producing pyroclasts. Unconsolidated material, or rather a deposit of pyroclasts, is also known as tephra. Tephra is divided into ash, which measures less than 2 mm, lapilli, which measures between 2 mm and 64 mm, and bombs and blocks, which are particles larger than 64 mm. Ash can be erupted either as ash fall or ash flow. During an ash fall, ash is ejected into the atmosphere and settles to the surface over a wide area. Ash can also be erupted as ash flows, which are coherent clouds of ash and gases, which flows near or along the surface of land. 
forms have twisted streamlined shapes, which indicate that they were erupted as globs of fluid, which cools and solidifies during their flight through the air. While blocks are angular pieces of rocks, bricked from volcanic conduits. Because of their large size, the volcanic block and bomb accumulation is confined to the immediate area of eruption. Consolidated material, also known as pyroclastic rock, is divided into agglomerate, lapilic tuff, and ash tuff. Large composite cones often generate a type of mud flow known as lahas, which are very destructive. This occur when volcanic ash and debris become saturated with water and flow down steep volcanic slopes, generally following stream valleys. The dissolved gases held by confining pressure in the magma comprise mainly of water vapor. Carbon dioxide, nitrogen, sulfur compounds and other gases made up the remaining percentage of dissolved gases in the magma. New ardents are formed when hot incandescent gases are combined with some large rock fragments and ash. Because of the hot boiling gases emitted from the volcanic debris, the ash can travel down slope in a nearly frictionless environment. Some new items can even travel at a speed of 200 km per hour, and the deposit can be found hundreds of kilometers from their source. Shield volcanoes are broad dome structures formed by basaltic eruptions. They usually contain only a small percentage of pyroclastic materials. As basaltic lava have a low silica content and allow dissolved gases to escape easily due to their low viscosity, basaltic eruptions are non-explosive. Such lavas are capable of flowing great distances down gentle slopes, forming thin sheets of nearly uniform thickness. Composite volcanoes are large and nearly symmetrical. The slopes of these volcanoes are steep. Composite volcanoes compose of both pyroclastic layers and lava flows. Both materials have an intermediate composition and the flow cools to form andesite. A composite cone may extrude viscous lavas of andesitic composition for long periods. Then suddenly, the eruptive style changes and the volcano violently ejects the pyroclastic material. Thus, the resulting structure consists of alternating layers of lava and pyroclasts. Extrusion of very fluid basaltic lavas along an extended fracture, also known as fissure eruptions, forms basalt plateaus. Because of the very fluid nature of the lava, some of these remain molten long enough to flow 150 kilometers from its source. And the result of such basaltic flow is the creation of plateau basalts, which are flat and have arab edges at the sides. Volcanic activities can occur along convergent plate boundaries, divergent plate boundaries, and at hot spots. The most notable belt of volcanic activity occurs along subduction zones. More than 60% of all active volcanoes are in the circumpacific belt that nearly encircles the margins of the Pacific Ocean Basin. About 20% of all active volcanoes are in the Mediterranean belt. Most of the large volcanoes in the Circum-Pacific and Mediterranean belts are composite volcanoes. Most of the rest of the active volcanoes are at or near the mid-oceanic ridges. The longest of these ridges is the mid-Atlantic ridge. Volcanism along the mid-oceanic ridges is mostly submarine and much of it goes undetected. Some volcanoes occur in the middle of tectonic plates where hotspots are found. Most of these are in the Pacific. This is a summary of what I've covered in my clip. I hope you have learned more about extrusive volcanism through my clip. Thank you.